Outside, sweltering summer heat. Inside, a biting frigid air. You usually have 50 degrees difference in temperature when we're only 15 feet away. Is a natural oddity that defies the laws of nature, where ice mysteriously forms in the summer and melts in the winter. First discovered in the late 19th century by a prospector searching for silver, the mine was used by locals to refrigerate meat in the summer months. As word spread, visitors flocked to marvel at the icy curiosity. But no one could explain what strange feat of nature could cause such an odd phenomenon. So Stefan and I are going to check this out for ourselves. I'm Nelson. How you doing? Fine, sir. Hey, good, good morning. Meet you. Welcome to Cottersport Ice Mine. We're meeting up with Gary Buxton who owns the property that houses the Countersport Ice Mine. Yeah, I want to see this That's thing. It. Okay, great. So you're going to go through here. Wow, it's cold. Outside, sweltering summer heat. Inside, a biting frigid air. You usually have 50 degrees difference in temperature when we're only 15 feet away. The chill emanates from the centerpiece within the mine, a 14 by 34 foot vertical shaft cascading with icicles. The rock strata holding up this mine resembles a game of Jenga. If a load-bearing piece gets pushed or kicked hard enough, it's possible the whole shelf could topple. Oh my goodness, wow, this is incredible. This is really cool. Yeah, it is really cold. We only just descended into the cave, and the peculiarities are glaring. Not only does the ice cave defy summer, but gravity too. The icicles grow up, not down. Look at the ice itself. See how clear it is? Uh -huh. This isn't water that's like, let's say, rising from the surface that has minerals in it. It's very likely that this is being drawn out of the air. It's precipitating out of the air. The rising ice is a clue. This precipitation occurs when moist air cools drastically. When the humid air from above is pushed downward into the frigid cavern, water particles begin to solidify, eventually turning into ice. But where is all this cold air coming from? This cave is riddled with thousands of tiny holes. Airflow could be coming from any one of them. I think we need some way to like track the air, if that makes sense. I'll rig up whatever it takes to get the job done, like attaching a walking stick to a smoke machine. By using smoke, we'll be able to visually detect even the slightest airflow in the mine. So we're getting clearly this fog coming up, but if there was a large circulatory system that's connected to some cavern or fracture network, yep. it would have whisked this smoke out in no time flat, I think. With no apparent airflow feeding this mine, what else could explain the freezing temperatures needed to maintain its icy interior? Stefan and I make a pit stop to see this ice formation for ourselves on a smaller scale. We have chosen a wooded area that replicates similar atmospheric conditions to that of the cave. By using this area's natural humidity, we will pour the dry ice into a container, hoping to see the formation of additional ice particles around the cup in real time. Yeah, just be careful not to pour it onto my hands because it's cold. You don't seem too concerned about my health. <sighs> just don't breathe too much of that in or you can pass out. This should be good. And immediately, we see the results of icing on the cup itself. It's starting to form some serious crystals now. It's actually, it's cool. It's 3D kind of, you know, because they're growing oh outwards. So you have a ton of ice forming on the outside, and it's extremely humid. And they were saying that in the winter, not as much ice forms. So I would be willing to say that the humidity is one of the key factors in the formation of the ice there. We're going to have to use some high-tech equipment to solve this mystery. Stefan and I are back at Countersport Ice Mine with a LiDAR unit attached to a remote control truck. Wow. The LiDAR will spin around using lasers to scan the cave. We'll be able to use the readings to create the first ever 3D map of this odd place, pointing out anything the airflow meter or smoke machine couldn't pick up. Uh, there's this one side that's a little slim in terms of uh, its point cloud. We need to fill in this gap that's on the opposite side of the ice cave. The terrain is tricky, even for this remote control truck. Oh, so um, close. There it is. Nice. All right, let's grab the robot and we'll head back to the lab. All that work finally comes down to processing it. Hey, look at that. That's actually a great angle. Actually. Immediately, we notice some fascinating points on our 3D map. Wow. Yeah, right there. 
These points represent small empty cavities just beyond our reach inside the walls. So we're seeing points here that exist outside of the cave that we were in. And you know, this LiDAR laser shines through and then bounces back and stores a point from outside. And that means that's an opening that we weren't able to see. Yep. That's pretty good proof of a fissure and fracture network that might lead to us feeding this cold spot. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, this is encouraging. What we have uncovered might actually be the answer to this logic-defying cavern. Our cutting-edge model has revealed literally thousands of tiny fissures and crevices in the cave walls, which suggests the possibility of a new theory. When winter arrives, these empty fissures trap in the natural cold air. The cavities hold on to this air, keeping the mine chilly throughout the summer months. As the cold temperatures within the fissures fade, it then begins to trap the hot summer air, ensuring the cave is warm enough to melt away any accumulating snowfall in the winter. In other words, the walls themselves act like an ice pack inside a lunchbox. But in this case, cold enough to create the icicles we have seen. 